All right, engineers, so what we're gonna do now in this video is we're gonna talk about how to be able to determine the rate and the rhythm for EKG, specifically like VTAC. We're gonna talk about this one, which is actually a monomorphic VTAC, and we'll explain what the heck that means. The whole purpose of these videos, these rate and rhythm videos, is not to be able to know exactly, you know, the pathophysiology and everything about that arrhythmia. It's to be able to identify the arrhythmia, and then again, keep going through your approach, okay? The first thing that you have to realize with these EKGs is they have diagnostic purpose, right? Obviously, the big thing that you need to know is, is the person having an arrhythmia? If it's a dangerous arrhythmia, what do we do? And we'll talk a little bit about that. And the second most important thing that you really want to know with the EKGs, is this person showing any signs of ischemia or like signs of an infarction? Okay. And again, we'll talk about how we go through these as we progress through this entire series. Okay, but let's keep using this rate rhythm and all the steps that we need to for these EKGs. It'll be so repetitive that you guys will be able to do this in your sleep. All right, first thing, rate. Let's go to our rhythm strip. This sucker is going fast. I do not want to count every single one of these and then basically add them up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find where one of these uh, deflections here lands on this nice little kind of like box here and I'm gonna count my boxes I got one box and I got two box so again how do we determine this 300 is one box divide that by two that's hundred and fifty beats per minute so that is beautiful okay hundred and fifty beats per minute so that means that this is definitely tachycardic we got a high heart rate here the ventricles are moving pretty darn fast and we got to be careful with that okay so that's the first thing we know. Next thing, rhythm. So we know it's tachycardic. Go to the RDR intervals. Are they normal? I'm looking here, and it's about two boxes. About two boxes. Yeah, this thing's going about two boxes each one. Okay? And you guys can double check this on this. But yeah, it's going pretty much two boxes at a time. So this is definitely regular. Okay, regular. Sweet deal. P waves. Do we see a P wave? I don't see a freaking P wave in sight. Okay, there is no P wave in this rhythm strip in our, which is following lead two. So because I don't see that, I'm gonna say there is no P wave. Okay, no P wave whatsoever, all right? Next thing I wanna do is, again, when you don't really see a P wave, obviously we can look in V1, see if you see any type of fibrillatory waves for AFib. Again, I don't really see anything here. I don't see any P wave whatsoever. All right, so let's move on to the next thing. Does every QRS follow a P wave? Well, there is no P wave. So because of that, there's no association between the atria and the ventricles at this point in time. It looks like the ventricles are beating at their own intrinsic rate. So this is AV dissociation. Ooh, no bueno on this. All right, next thing, QRS complexes. Are these suckers wide or are they narrow? So I have a wide complex. I'm not even going to count that because that's almost like one large box. So I already know that that is way too many boxes. Remember, if it's three boxes, that's already point, uh, 0 0.12 seconds. And that's already too wide of a QRS complex. So I know that this guy is definitely a wide QRS complex right here. Now here's what I want you to remember. This is so important. Whenever you're reading these EKGs, you have to have kind of a stepwise pattern to these. And this is a dangerous... EKG that you don't really want to see on a person, but if you do, you need to be able to recognize it and know what to do. All right, I look here, I say, I got a fast heart rate. This person is tachycardic. Then I notice that they have a regular rhythm, but they have a wide QRS complex. Anytime you see someone who is tachycardic, they have a regular rhythm and they have a wide QRS complex, that is VTAC until proven otherwise. All right, because there could be other things that this definitely could be. It could be some type of supraventricular tachycardia. It could be AFib with um, Wolf Parkinson's White syndrome. It could be some type of ectopic focus with a bundle, like uh, with a uh, aberrant signaling. There could be a bunch of different things. But VTAC is the one that is the most dangerous, and you need to be careful because you can treat someone with VTAC, and if it is SVT or if it is something else, they'll be fine. But if you don't treat VTAC immediately, the person can actually die. So we need to know what to do. If you see someone in VTAC, the first kind of treatment step here that you can take 
is you can try to slow it down with adenosine. If adenosine doesn't work, you have to use other types of antiarrhythmics. But before I even say that, here's the actually the first thing that you should actually do. Before you give someone adenosine, you want to know if someone is in VTAC, first question that you have to ask is, do they have a pulse? If there is no pulse, you go to what's called the ACLS algorithm, and your basic step here is you're going to start your CPR, and you're most likely going to be defibrillating this patient. Okay, so you'd be utilizing CPR, defibrillation, and if needed, maybe you can also be using epi and amiodarone, okay, in between those. If they do have a pulse, then you're going to be moving on to these steps here where you're going to try adenosine. If adenosine doesn't work, you try other antiarrhythmics. Uh, options include procainamide, or you could try amiodarone. Uh, lidocaine, there's a bunch of different options, Solitol, but you're going to try that. And again, if that doesn't work, you should also be preparing for synchronized cardioversion. Okay. All right, so that's important things to realize whenever you have a person who's coming in, they have tachycardic, regular wide QRS complexes, you consider to be VTAC until proven otherwise. You see that on EKG, first thing you do is, do they have a pulse, okay? If they don't have a pulse, you start CPR, and you do that and get the defibrillator ready, okay? And also use epi and amiodarone in between those rounds, all right? If they do have a pulse, the next thing you're gonna be doing is, okay, let's try to slow the heart rate down. You give them adenosine, which blocks the AV node. If that doesn't work, then you try procainamide or you try amiodarone, lidocaine, solitol, and again, you start preparing for synchronized cardioversion, all right? And again, we'll talk about what um, defibrillation and synchronized cardioversion are. Basically, it's a simple thing. You, you have here your P wave, you have your Q, RS complex, and you have your T wave. With synchronized cardioversion, you basically deliver an electrical signal that's tracking the R wave, okay? So that's one thing that you do with synchronized cardioversion. With defibrillation, it shocks anywhere, okay? Because that's the important thing. With defibrillation, it shocks anywhere within this complex, okay? With the synchronized cardioversion, you're specifically tracking it off of the R wave. And that's why it's important that you know the difference between those two, all right? So if we wanted to continue to keep going here as another example, again, look at this dude. I'm not gonna count all these. But if you compare here, look at this son of a gun right there. That's about two blocks. One, two. This sucker is moving at about 150 beats per minute. It's a wide QRS complex. Again, it's regular intervals, and that's tachycardic. Tachycardic, regular, wide complex tachycardia, VTAC until proven otherwise. Okay? But here's one more thing I want to mention. Look at all of these, uh, these this ventricular tachycardia. Don't all of these QRS complexes look exactly the same? If they look the same, it's monomorphic. So that's one thing to remember, monomorphic VTAC. All right? All right, engineers. So let's go ahead and move on to the next um, EKG here, and that's going to be talking about torsades to points.